Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. I come quickly into this place because I never left. What you call the channeling is not channeling. It's natural. It is the invitation that spirit has of the way communication should be, whether it's for yourself whether it's for others. That's what happens when you open the door in your heart. And through that door comes pouring that part of you which melds with the other side of the veil, that part of you which is God. And the two of you give a message. It is why the channeling is so different from human being to human being, it is the divinity in the human being married and melded to spirit that gives you the message. The clearer the channel, the better. And so it is again that we say that no preparation is needed. Like you might expect the human to sit for a while and balance for a while and do some exercises for a while. No, not necessarily. You don't have to be ready for the love of God. It's just there. It's in every cell. God eternal within the body. Every cell. Repeat it over and over, repeat it over and over. And so it is, something of this nature, with a group of this size that comes, is not hearing something that is, is bizarre or strange or occult. They're hearing a message from the other side of the veil, filled with the love of God. The love of the family, that is the core energy. That is the absolute that is what you could count on all your life and then beyond. Let me tell you, dear human being, when you take that last breath, when you take that last breath, I want you to remember these words. Prepare for the love of God. Fear not what is on the other side of the veil, for you're just going to where you came from. It's important that you remember that. It's important that you know that. I want to do something different. And I don't do this often. It's a good time to do this, for this is the end of this 2007. I would like to paint a positive picture of something we see as the potentials of this planet. I would like to give you an itemization of what some have called a, a predictions. It would be a, a prediction channel, but crying doesn't give predictions. I want to tell you what I see as the potentials that are aligning themselves with humanity. And maybe you're going to leave with some different thoughts than when you came in. Are there going to be trouble ahead? Sure there is. For certain kinds of institutions, certain kinds of energies especially. In order to cross that bridge in these next five years to get you into a vibratory rate in 2012 that is a preemptory rate for the acceleration to begin. When that 2012 comes, I want to tell you there'll be no snapshot, there'll be no celebration in anybody's life but yours that you made it, that humanity is beginning an upswing. All of this talk about new energy, what difference does it make? All the talk about the new tools, what difference does it make? I will tell you what you're going to see and expect. The potentials are laid out. You can't help it. The ball is rolling. You have started the process and you started it years ago. You started the process for a change of human nature. Something that has not moved off of its mark since you were born, since your parents were born, since your grandparents were born. 
since your history books were written human nature you say it flippantly oh well that's just human nature like it's always going to be there it isn't it's changing what I'm about to tell you are the predictions for one generation removed from yours I want to take you to that place I'm going to tell you some things that might occur in the interim of that place I will tell you this in a generation dear human beings when you look backwards you're going to look at this energy and you're going to say this was the old energy that's how much of a change you can expect and some of you may not like where it goes and some of you won't mind because it will change drastically from the traditions that you would expect from the things perhaps that even you enjoyed and you called correct and proper appropriate it's all going to move off its peg of normalcy it has to because humans are about to shift I take you a generation in the future of what the potentials are crying is this the future it's the future according to now here's what the potentials are telling you now I'll give you some good news if this is going to be considering considered the old energy then what are you headed for I tell you you're headed for a time when more human beings look at themselves as spiritual beings right from the beginning my partner mentioned that books are being written about the fact that the universe could be no accident that indeed the human beings search for God the first thing they can do when they have sentience when they have understanding search for God now amplify that oh it's not going to be a spiritual human race it's going to be one however who knows absolutely 100 percent that they came from somewhere else and there'll be a lot of searching going on there'll be a lot of decisions being made and there'll be a lot of a lot of seriousness at a younger age about who is God and I want you to remember this not like today the answer is different because the question is different today's question is what is God in a generation it'll be who is God that is a major shift recognition that it is intelligent that it is loving and how do you find it today it's curiosity in a generation it'll be beautiful search can you believe something like that that different I want to tell you about the children today's children what's going to happen tomorrow's children a generation's children from today you got a glimpse that my partner gave you the potentials and the possibilities they are grabbing a hold of DNA evolution activating pieces and parts that have been there all along since Lemurian days slow activation of these interdimensional layers that are bringing you into a conceptual consciousness a non-linear consciousness where you'll be able to look at somebody not only just see their energy but know if they're telling you the truth wouldn't that be nice lying will be difficult wouldn't that be nice these are the gifts that are coming in the children even of today I have given my partner this concept before so he is now going to explain it to you regarding the children and it's a difficult concept because it is beyond the paradigm of what you would expect and it's not happened before the children are different and they're different in ways that are beyond what you think so let me start with this an analogy 
The animals of this planet have what you have described as natural instinct. And when some animals are born on the planet, even if their parents have been lost and they're raised by human beings, they still know who their enemies are. They still know about the habitat that they're supposed to enjoy. They still know the food that they're supposed to eat. They know of the poison berries to stay away from. All of these things without training because it is inbred in the instinct of the animal's DNA. One of the most interesting things that takes place on this planet is how appropriate you are socially. And it has come to the point where a human being, the top of the evolutionary ladder and sacred he is, is born into the planet and you don't give him any instinct at all. <laughs> he comes in blank because that's appropriate, isn't it? You don't want to say he would come in with a bias, would you? That would be inappropriate. You have to be proper and that is funny <laughs> because the human beings come in with all the instincts of the ages every single one of them and there's a new instinct that the children of this age will carry and that is this they will understand and they will know appropriateness in education here's what I mean take one of those animals I talked to you about here take one of those animals and you're you're raising them and you're trying to give them the food of the human being and they're looking at you and they're saying that's not our food give us what we're supposed to have and when you do they'll eat it but if you give them some other things that you think are appropriate for them they won't because it's human food and they know better and I've just described what the indigos are going to become. Children of a consciousness that when you teach them in an inappropriate way, they know better. And even though they do not know the substance of the teaching yet, they don't know the facts, they don't know the concept, but they'll certainly know if you're giving it to them incorrectly. Do you understand? It's a new instinct. It's a change in human nature. You're going to see it. You've already begun. And these issues in education that you have right now that are facing the young people who are beginning to balk and, and reject the education that they're, that they're seeing is the forerunner of this. It's going to get worse until the education system actually breaks. And it will. It has to. When the children decide to walk out and form their own school <laughs> and they will you see they have an instinct human nature is shifting the DNA is changing the new age is going to change too When there is a discovery on this planet that is scientific, the entire community knows. You see, there is a network of interlacing communications that all science understands and knows about worldwide. If there is a discovery, whoever makes it first gets their name on it. And the rest of the community says, isn't that nice? And it remains that way. And that's because there's a network of communications, an understanding among them that they're all equal. They're all equal in the way of those who discover things first can have the energy upon them. It doesn't work that way in the New Age. For the New Age is not interlaced with a network of communication. Instead, it is hub-oriented. You know what's going on in your hub. And in another country, they know what's going on in their hub. But there's very little talking to one another. The languages don't mesh. There's no worldwide interlace. Therefore, when new energy is discovered in the new age, for instance, a new healing method, it will get a name. 
and then someone on the other side of the globe will discover it and it'll get another name <laughs> and then someone on another continent discovers it yet again and it gets another name so suddenly you have those doing pretty much the same thing with many names let me clarify this I am not speaking now of the profundity of the work of the EMF balancing technique for this was given very very early on to set a precedent I am speaking now of what happens next many energies delivered to you with many names in the future there will be a network and like science the new age actually will communicate with one another enough to see who received that energy and it will become one name and I tell you this because it's confusing now. Just wait. There are those of you who say, well, I know all about energy work. There are those of you who say, what more could there be? Wow, we have such beautiful energy work now. We have amazing things happening. <laughs> Just wait. And it's going to be very important that all of you recognize together what a new energy is to get instead of having eight or nine of them around the planet all competing with one another you see well now crying I'm not sure I can understand how that's gonna be because it's not really the human nature of today and you're absolutely right it is not that's gonna change where egos are put aside where spirit is put on top and where those healers will get together and celebrate the energy that they have come up with instead of competing with one another. I'm telling you the truth. It's what stands in the way right now of so much more that you can do as those in metaphysics. Coming together, one energy, one name, one celebration. It's going to be the way of it. Oh, and if you think that's unusual, wait until I tell you the next one. This one, you won't believe. Oh no, I'm crying. That's just too far-fetched, you'll say. I want to tell you about a change of human attitude, a change of human nature to the degree that it's going to change who leads the countries of the planet. An end. Be careful, my partner. Get this correct. Oh, you won't believe this. For as long as you've lived, any history book you turn to, it's the same. The countries that have the most power as expressed in force when it's alive and well today the countries that have the most force as described and defined as that which is powerful forceful even turning into violence they're the ones who win the potential that they have in their arsenals is what makes them great that's human nature today now let me tell you where the power is going to be in the future and I'll tell you this there'll come a time when the best thing you can have as one who is running for any seat of government is the one who will win will have the one the one who will win will have the most compassion and you will start to see compassion and empathy as the virtues of power on this planet. There's a trade network which is beginning now which will sweep across the globe in 25 to 50 years when everyone is trading with everyone you will not have the competition for force as you do today. And there'll be another standard set for which country is the highest thought of and it will be which has the most compassionate leadership 
as expressed then in what they can do to assist their people in controlling their own way in a compassionate way you've never seen it yet you've never seen it yet that is a potential I told you you wouldn't believe it <laughs> what is the phrase politics as usual no matter how far back in history you see it's politics as usual isn't it well get ready for a shift well crying I'm not sure I'm gonna be here to see that oh really I see so you mean when you leave the planet this time you're not coming back <laughs> yes you are and you're gonna want to don't miss what's coming imagine growing up with compassionate leadership oh. you're going to see this slowly develop for human nature changes extremely slow how long however has it taken for you to see the new consciousness of the children it's almost immediate hasn't it? it's been with you only 10 years and you are already feeling the difference imagine this now watch for these things even in the own your own elections in this country watch for the compassionate leadership being one of the virtues even in your election campaigns it's starting now watch for this ah oh, and did I mention the end of macho-ness <laughs> last gasp for those leaders who want to pound their chest and say I am king other people will replace them with leaders who are compassionate watch for this it's happening it's coming and some of those of you are saying I should live so long human beings don't worry about how long you're gonna live because you will experience this <laughs> oh I have to mention if I'm going to talk about these things and predictions I will now turn on purpose to science and I will speak now to the doctor to Yai as I often do <laughs> this is for him it is also for you and it goes like this for there will come a time in history when you will look back on these messages and you will remember where you heard them first when they prove to be true and accurate Yahi, I want to take you back for a moment to your vision. I've done this before. When you walked into the room and DNA was as big as you were and you could examine it to the degree that you were allowed to in order to get those revelations and insights that you needed to begin your work. Those things that would, that would, that would push you to the place where you are now. You saw the chromosomes. I want to tell you something you may not have seen, but they were there. When you revisit the vision, I want you to see these things, perhaps in a different light, something that's vibrating in the corner, that's, that's even small within your vision. Now, my partner has never given this information, so I want him to be careful, and I want him to see it before he speaks accurately. DNA seems not to have changed. And when you look at it chemically, you would say it has pretty much stayed the same for as long as you could look at it. And yet we know that there is evolution on this planet of all things, including your own DNA's consciousness. And wouldn't you expect to see that somewhere? Perhaps a rearrangement of the letters a rearrangement in some form of the chemicals to create alterations, just minor ones, in the chromosomes 
to get you into a place where the genetic structure of the human genome would be just slightly different in evolved structure. I'll tell you this is happening. And now I'm going to tell you where to look. <laughs> There's a stability of proportional relationships within the chemistry of DNA that will remain stable. The sizing of the chromosomes, all of these kinds of things, that is part of the DNA and that is the core function. But there is a part of that DNA, it was shown to you in your vision, a part of the DNA that is responsible for, let us call it the research department. <laughs> if DNA were a corporation, there's something in it that is not stable, that is always willing to change, that is ripe for experimentation and sees itself as responsible for evolving its own consciousness. To some I speak in circles, the doctor will know what I'm speaking of. A part of DNA that is not going to stay the same. And it is some of the smallest of the small. And you will find it. And my partner will use a word and it may not be the right one and I will ask the doctor to translate it later. He's done that before. <laughs> In the sub telomere, the sub telomere area, the smallest of the small. In the sub telomeres there is an allowance for change. And the dear doctor should know that those are the areas that respond to the interdimensional energy that he sends them. Find a way to measure it, you'll see it immediately. This is not unique and the information is available in science very shortly and you will see this in the globe. The acknowledgement of sub-telomere information being important. So my admonishment to the doctor is, be the first one. <laughs> Brian, give us a prediction, will you? About something that's going to happen a little sooner. All right, I will give you one. There is a possibility, a potential that looms very, very strong that one of your financial institutions, one with the most money on the entire continent, is going to fail. And it's called insurance. <laughs> Watch for problems. They're already there. They're already there. How the money is collected, the integrity of where it goes who gets it and who doesn't and why, what it's really for. Is it helpful? Is it not? Most don't even know the extent of the enormity of money that these companies have. And I will tell you what's going to happen. They're not going to fail because of something they do. They're going to fail because the energy of the consciousness of this planet is going to change and make them responsible for what they've done. Watch for it. There are those who said, what about, what about the, the monetary systems of the planet? Let me tell you something that you may not even recognize. Those who follow this work know that it was only three to four years ago which I sat on a platform like this and said, you may eventually have to devaluate your dollar in order to have a situation where you come par with the trade agreements that are needed for this earth to go into peace eventually, for trading partners do not war with each other, if you've noticed. And there was fear around that, oh, we don't want to devaluate our dollar. We have seen what has happened in other countries when they did that, and it was awful. Well, let me tell you, you just did it. <laughs> All by itself. It happened gradually. And those who would fear something never thought, ever thought, 
that you would have a situation where the dollar would devaluate itself slowly and appropriately and find a niche for itself and balance into the system without the pain that you have seen when countries do it in a way that is demanded. I want to, I want to remind you of something. Crying, you're talking about trade. I'm not understanding these things. I want to remind you of something. This is not economics I am talking about. This is, this is peace on earth I'm talking about. 50 years ago, you had one of the strongest enemies you have ever had. And your parents know what I'm talking about. For you fought the Japanese. And if you go back and you see what you called them, and if you go back and you see what you thought of them, they were enemies. And there was hate on both sides. I want to remind you of that energy, dear human being, because it's gone today. Only two generations later, their economy is so allied with yours that if one of you failed, the other one would too. And I would like to tell you that between the two of you, there's only admiration today. The hatred has been gone. It's, it's a product of what we call oh, the trade benevolence. The countries that need each other's trade will never war with each other. That's what you're starting to see on this globe, on this planet. Some of those who, who don't want that, who are, who are afraid of this change, don't understand why it is needed. There'll come a time when the doors are open and you trade with everyone. It'll be very, very difficult to war with anyone. That's only a generation away. That's the potential. I'm going to close this. I'm going to tell you that you can't have a new consciousness that understands that it's, it's come from somewhere else without having, without having an increase in religion. Not spirituality religion <laughs> and you will and there are those who said oh no I, I thought that was going to go away <laughs> let me tell you something I want you to give above this for a minute just get above this put away all of those things that you might know or think are going on and listen to these words blessed is the human being who searches for home in their own way in the building of their choice with a priest of their choice in any way that makes their heart feel the love of God in their way for they will have light in their heart and will have a better life for it that's it and that may not be what you want to do For we sit in a place, and I have told you this before, less than one half of one percent of the human race will absorb and accept what you are believing today. And that's going to be enough. That's going to be enough. That's the critical mass. It has been enough. That was enough for 1987, the harmonic convergence. It's going to be enough for 2012. You're carrying the light of the earth. Let the others search for God the way they wish and bless them on their journey. Never judge what they do or what they think. Let them find the love their own way. And there will be an increasing number of those who will turn to this. And that is what I see. I sit in front of those literally responsible for changing the earth back in 1987 crying you say I only found you three months ago I only just got into this oh no you didn't old soul you're in a timeless state you just you just had an appointment three months ago to do something you always knew was coming <laughs> and now you know and now you know 
you're part of a much larger plan. Blessed are those here who are in the trenches of the war that we have called the war of energy between the dark and the light. For they are winning. Be comforted this night. Leave differently than you came. And so it is. <laughs>